what you see is a representation of the leadership in Nairobi and especially those extracted from the Kenya Panza Coalition. And we have a statement to make in regard to the state of the city county. This is a press statement by Nairobi leaders on the state of Nairobi city county. It is our observation, an observation that is now the view of a majority of the city county's residents that Nairobi could be facing its worst leadership crisis at City Hall in this capital's history. The dream that was sold during the campaigns of a city of order and dignity, hope and opportunity for all has turned into the nightmare that Nairobi is becoming. Clamped in an ever-tightening chokehold of an arrogant, high-nosed, aloof and dangerously corrupt leadership, Nairobi City is drowning in the murky lakes of free-flowing sewerage, estate buried in mountains of garbage, taps whistling to the tunes of dryness as storm waters flood our homes and businesses. The skies above the city skyline are being punctured by precariously unplanned, haphazard, haphazardly constructed towers that know no limit. Because the city sets no limit for any developer who is willing to bribe the approvers at City Hall with cash or apartments and commercial space in these high-rise structures. Nairobians deserve and are demanding for a leadership that has a plan. Nairobi deserves a leadership with a clear vision, a leadership that relies on a well-thought-through master plan as the cardinal guiding instrument that will be informing all policy decisions, legislative proposals, programs, and project decisions. Now, almost two years after elections, the city is running Kyududo without any pronounced blueprint with incoherent and disjointed efforts that prioritize only the projects and programs that feed the insatiable greed of the new city hall kleptomaniacs. The city county, actually, this current city county government will go down in history as the most incompetent, inept, deceptive, amateurish, insensitive, and morally degenerate administration yet. With only two years in office, the charges being brought against this, this city county government are innumerable, and they keep mounting. A recent Auditor General's report unearthed gross mismanagement of public finances, payments of huge amount of monies to ghost workers, corrupt and selective payment of pending bills in exchange for big kickbacks, suspicious accounts, and misappropriation of billions of Kenya shillings. In a shocking revelation last year, a junior officer, a mere junior officer, wielding authority directly granted by the governor, clandestinely approved over 600 building plans against the Physical Land Planning Act, which stipulates that this, the county chief officer is responsible for approving building plans. That would explain the Kyududo development and the unplanned high-rise buildings that are mushrooming and cropping up, uh, being plugged in every uh, corner of this city. Such cases of horrific abuse of power only give a sneak preview of the rot, of the rot house that is the Nairobi City County Hall, further indicting its highest offices in the, uh, at City Hall. The arrogance displayed in the acquisition of private personal luxury assets by the city's top leadership is shocking. Not only is it shocking, it is news nauseating. Never before has Nairobi ever been pilfered so brazenly, so crudely, and never before with so much display of juvenile bravado, intimidation, exclusion, and undermining of those who they are not able to pay to buy with their looted billions. Pitting leaders against each other and sponsoring petty squabbles has become the expensive hobby 
of the governor and his court of loyalists, the loyalists who are loyalists for hire. Yes. The city county assembly risks sinking into a dysfunctional, remote-controlled, ineffective house with the ever-dangling carrot pro promised to those who are willing to sell their loyalty and dignity for a party 30 coins of silver. And we are saying to the executive at Nairobi City Council, let our MCAs go. MCAs do not need handouts. They do not need bribes. You need to institutionalize the World Development Fund so that these MCAs are able to conduct their development in their respective wards. MCAs are not there to beg for handouts in the governor's parlor. They're not there to be bribed for whatever reason that the governor thinks that these MCAs need to be bribed for. They need their independence. They need their financial independence by providing a good structure for the World Development Fund to be properly funded, well instituted, so that they can undertake their development in their, con in, in their, in their county wards. It is for this reason that we, a representation of Kenya Kwanzaa leaders, and by extension, representatives of the millions of disgruntled Nairobi residents, want to call Governor Sakaja and his administration to order. We are also calling upon the relevant audit, oversight, and investigative bodies to swiftly intervene and rescue Nairobi from the shackles of rampant mismanagement and incompetence. We are starting right here at home. We are starting here in Parliament. Senate, which has the constitutional mandate of oversight over counties, must process the Nairobi situation with urgency. Governor Sakaja must account to the citizens through appearances before Senate. He must be invited to put the record straight and these invites are invites that he must honor. There is no excuse by any governor as to why you cannot uh, honor an invite by parliament. An invite that is not honored calls uh, or, or attracts a summon. And when the summons are not honored, it attracts the penalties as stipulated by the law of Kenya and by the standing orders of this very honorable August House. He must be invited to put the record straight, invites that he must honor. It is the least that must be done.